So your your album uh, was just out, was it last week, I think, right? Yeah, last yep. Friday, the 26th. And uh, so I, I know you've done tons of other stuff with different bands and whatever, but my, this is your first kind of solo record. So uh, what, what was that experience like for you? Um, yeah, I've done I've done quite a quite a bit of uh, recording for other folks and just bands previously and yep. and other projects, including you know, solo projects. But this was just the first full length, you know, album. Right. Um, yeah. And um, so, yeah, it was it was cool. You know, I mean, I'm a I'm a full length album kind of guy, you know, <laughs> and, and I I it's you know it can be fun experimenting and releasing singles and and smaller projects and eps but you know i grew up i grew up in the in the you know i was born in the 80s i grew up in the 90s and you know we were still buying and and uh ingesting music in the format of a full album at that time you know right. so so i i relate to it and uh um you know, uh, particularly, I think whenever I was really buying records at first, it was still like you know cassettes. So yeah, yeah, I'm you sure know, were. <laughs> it, it's not it's not all that uh, simple to really skip just one song. You just kind of you know you just yep. listen to it to it yep. all. And yep. uh, so I, you know, the approach of making a record that um, had sort of a a flow to it and that kind of thing was uh, yeah, it was just it was fun. Right, right. To get to do that finally, and so what? What kind of flow did you want to go for with this record? Because I noticed one thing. One thing is very interesting. The songs are pretty short. They're like mostly under three or four minutes long, two to three minutes long. Lots of cr crunchy guitar riffs throughout, but you don't really stretch out. You're, you you keep a very concise thing going on. Yeah, yeah. You know that's um, that's a good observation and very <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Um, oh, good. Yeah, yeah, you know, in a sense, it's kind of, um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly stylistically not like a punk rock album, but but in that a concise way, it right. sort of is, you know what I mean? And, um, and uh, so it's almost like, I've, I don't think I've said this in an interview yet, but I have in conversation with friends, maybe that um, some of this, yeah, the length of the song, that's almost like a folk rock uh punk punk rock uh you know sort of uh, mashup if you will but um right. yeah yeah we didn't really we don't stretch out and really jam or anything like that it just it, it's um you know it's just about the song and uh um just try to i guess keep it that way on this particular gotcha you know, gotcha bunch of songs now you recorded the album at some place called smokestack studios is that right yeah, that's right. It sounds pretty cool. Is it as cool as it sounds? <laughs> it is. It's probably even cooler than it sounds, honestly. <laughs> um, my friend Paul's studio, yeah, here in Nashville, uh, kind of nestled in the Berry Hill area, which is where a lot of the studios in Nashville exist. Right. Yeah. And um, it's, yeah, it's a great, it's a great at atmosphere there. I've recorded quite a bit of music there. I recorded my previous um, EP, uh, make me no king we did that there we recorded several other uh things that have been released as singles and things there as well um and yeah it's 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 uh it's a great vibe and he's got you know he's got all the old equipment we're able right. to record live to tape you know and uh, is that true actually live and actually on tape sure not the entire album but right. yeah the uh the the drums and bass and uh you know, uh, rhythm guitars and things sure. like that. We, we, we recorded, you know, in the room together, um, right. to tape. So, yeah. And then, you know, and then of course, um, you know, overdubbing vocals and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, solos and, and whatnot, but yeah, we did as much as we could live to tape. And, uh, so, so Paul studio is cool for that. And, uh, he just has all the cool old, stuff that you want to kind of play around with you know and the things that were the instruments and recording equipment that was used on a lot of my favorite records from the 60s and 70s so what are those name a couple of titles just so we get an idea of what you're talking about oh some of my some of my go-to albums sure uh, sure um you know credence clearwater revival pretty much any of those records were well they were good at short 
songs as well, but catchy as all get out. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. John Fogarty, I think it is, you know, I think, I mean, he's had a lot of, he's had a pretty popular uh, life, but still I feel like he's, <laughs> For some reason in my mind, he's still like underappreciated for, um, you know, kind of oh. being just a, just really great at all things, whether it's songwriting or his guitar playing or his singing or right, right. all of the above, you know. Well, you're right, you know, because, you know, when people talk about the, the great songwriters and classic art, rock artists, there's always Dylan and Neil Young and, you know, all those guys. But you never hear yeah. anybody say anything about John Fogarty. And you're right. He's, he's did pretty impressive work even now, huh? yeah. especially back then. Uh, yeah, I'll there, have to remember a... buying those records when they came out, man. It was great. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I, I my dad had those records and, and that was some of the first, um, well, I guess it's considered now classic rock records that yeah. I um, that I stole from my dad and dug into. So, you know, yeah, it's. For me, um, anyway, the the um, the influence of you know CCR, uh, sort of a departure from that sound, but like you know Led Zeppelin and sure. Jimi Hendrix and and yep. all those kind of things. Um, and this record has kind of a little bit of uh, you know speaking of the short kind of pop rock songs like like the Kinks and things like that. Right, sort of right. The influence to it can't go wrong with the Kinks, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I noticed there's a video that uh, for the song called "When I Think About Love," which I believe was shot in Texas, in Marfa, Texas. Is that right? You're what I think about when I think about love. 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 Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, now, I'm, familiar, I'm and Marfa and, kind of and, familiar with Marfa a little bit. I've talked about it with people, but here in New Zealand, you know, we don't get around that much to, to the place. But it's got kind of a music scene happening there, isn't that right? It's definitely an art scene, um, yeah. and and I'm not I'm not entirely sure to what extent the the music scene is there. I, right. um, there's certainly not like a from what I saw. It's a small town, population of about two thousand people. Right um uh, but the art scene is the main thing there um we were just out there in november for a little kind of holiday if you will and just road tripped you know it's a good 17 hour drive from uh from nashville so we sure. we stretched out and drove and drove out there and uh it's a it's a big minimalist um art scene though is is what it primarily is right 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 yeah is but I, I assume you know Sorry. Is that you on the motorcycle, zooming around on the? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, we took. Uh, I, I pulled that um, behind my um, Sprinter van, and we. Uh, yeah, I was able to pull it off to some places and, and zip around, which was fun. And uh, yeah, that whole video was filmed either, you know, kind of the outskirts of Marfa, and then we traveled up to New Mexico to um, White Sands, New Mexico National National Monument there. So. Uh, lucky yeah. you got that in before the lockdown all happened. Huh? <laughs> yeah, well, we did it. We did it actually after uh, you know th this past November. So we we did it. We did it during COVID, but you know, um, it, it was the only traveling we've done all year, and it was kind of uh, right. It felt like about as safe of a of a trip as we could do. You know, we we stayed pretty isolated in our to our van, and then like I said, we went out to a very rural part yeah. of West Texas where there's probably more coyotes than there are people. So yeah, um, <laughs> that's pretty isolated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and I, I think, did you do a, a show on fe February 25th, uh, on some kind of pre-release show or something? I'm, I'm curious as to how that, uh, that, that might've been a, uh, something, I think that's probably something that we were going to do that. We okay. Did. Uh, it doesn't come out until this coming Thursday, actually. Oh, okay. Um, well, we'll so see. it ended up getting bumped back a week, but yeah. Um, you better plug, tell Thursday. us about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th this Thursday. Um, so I haven't done any, any live stream, um, performances. Um, right. I've, I've, I've popped, I popped on to a couple different things um, where I maybe did a song or two, but um, I haven't done my own full show this whole year. So um, now that the record is out, uh, you know, I was 
I was I was holding out as long as I could to not do a live stream, and I finally kind of yeah. broke down. And we're doing one, uh, so it's um, it'll be viewable on the Spin Magazine um, Twitch page, uh, right? Twitch app um, uh, for free on Thursday, uh, Thursday, seven thirty, you know, Central uh, Central Standard Time. All right, so it's actually the next day here in New Zealand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forget how that works. I've actually, I've been to news. I've been to Auckland once before and yep. um, played a, played a show there several years ago with someone else, but I, um, yeah, I always forget if you guys are behind or ahead. No, or, we're we're way get, ahead of you. It's uh, it gets Tuesday confusing. here, Tuesday, at, yeah. just afternoon. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> and it's summertime. <laughs> yeah. I do remember that when I was there, it was, it was December and it was nice and nice and warm. Yep. 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 Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll get out and be able to do a little traveling again soon, but you don't have much of a New Zealand accent. I'm afraid not. No, I moved here from (laughs) upstate New York about five years ago or so. Yeah. That American accent does not go anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) That checks out. Yeah. Yeah. I I always disappoint people where they're expecting to hear some Kiwi accent and I just can't do it. <laughs> no, no. I, trust me. This is better for me. Uh, <laughs> well, there is that. We can understand each other, which is always a plus. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> anyway, so let's touch on a couple other songs on the record. Um, there's another hey, one you did a video yeah. for called Good Day. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Is this big long panning shot and somebody dancing around in a red foil shirt? It looks like or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that was a guy named Eric Harris. He's a he's a professional uh, uh, ballet member of the Nashville Ballet here. So right. he got to kind of do probably a little something different out of his normal ballet uh, wheelhouse on that performance. But uh, I met I met him earlier. Um, in the year he was uh giving me some some pointers some little dance lessons um prior to the filming of the music video for a song called lightning strike Uh uh-huh and um so he taught me a couple steps for that and um when it was time to do this video i needed someone to do a dance throughout the video and uh he was he was the first person on my mind but yeah yeah that that whole video is a one is a single shot Yep. You know, so it was, uh, you know, we had to do that, um, oh, probably about 15 times, you know, before <laughs> we got it right. Good times. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you see myself and my drummer Lance multiple t- in multiple spots throughout the, the video. So, right. you know, as soon as we're out of frame, we, we take off sprinting <laughs> back around the back of the camera. And uh, I got to say, doing that multiple times, you know, it got to be a pretty exhausting you know, video shoot day, but uh, we, we finally got it, got it right. Good way to stay in shape anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> try. Now there's a tune on the record called blind eyes, which kind of takes on a little bluesy vibe to it. Can you tell me a little bit about that one? I'll take the easy way. You used to take the cake. Why don't it feel the same? It's no one else to blame. Yeah, Blind Eyes, I co-wrote that song. Most of the songs on the record I wrote by myself, but there's two that I co-wrote with friends. And uh, that one was co-written with uh, my friend Matt Thiessen. Right. Um, he's got a band called Reliant K that he's done for a lot of years. And uh, so uh, let me see. Yeah, that song, Blind Eyes. That's the only song that I didn't write on the guitar for the record. We wrote that song at his piano one day. Right. And uh yeah, yeah, it's it kind of does stand out from the rest of the record. It's got a little bit of a, I think, a different feel because of it being written on the piano, and you know, you just get, you kind of get somewhere different that that way. Gotcha. You know? gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, tell me, which is near the end of the record, is there a female vocalist near the end of that thing?
No, that's me. Is it you? Okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's <laughs> you uh, never know these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for any for anybody that is listening to this interview that hasn't heard that, then you would know, yeah. <laughs> uh, be surprised if that was actually me, but um, no, been, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, um, uh, Regina McCrary is the singer on that. Um, and she's, uh, she's great. Um, uh, she's been involved in some other, uh, I've gotten her in on some other projects that I've done in the past, including, right. um, a song or two on my previous EP, but she's incredible. Um, she's got a group with her sisters, three of her sisters called the McCrary sisters mm -hmm. and they're a, uh, you know, gospel group. Um, but Regina in particular has sang back up for a lot of folks, including um, Bob Dylan. She was a background singer for, for Dylan for I think about six or seven years, Johnny Cash. Um, she's probably, you know, if there's a gospel vocal background vocal on a album made in, in Nashville in the last right you know, 30 years, uh, she's, she's probably been on nine out of 10 of them. She's, right. you know, she's incredible. Right. Right. So what's the rock and roll scene like in Nashville? Everybody talks about the country music, but of course, <laughs> you know, Jack Black has, has been there and or Jack White rather. And so, you know, yeah, it's kind of changed it around, but you know, for your, you're a, a bit heavier in general sometimes. So is there something happening there that uh, brought you to Nashville? Um, well, I, I was going to college in Missouri studying English and creative writing at the time that I moved <laughs> here, but I had some bands and one of those bands, uh, well, myself and the other primary songwriter of the band, um, had some interest from, from a publishing company, well, EMI here right. in Nashville. And so, um, that's how I ended up here, sort of uh, songwriting and development of uh, a new project that we were working on at the time. And um, but, yeah, the rock scene, you know, I, I've been involved in one way or another with certainly everything but the um, country music scene in Nashville. Right. And uh, for the last 15 years. And um, yeah, it's, there's, you know, it's evolved, you know, a lot, a lot of my friends that were in rock bands when I moved here are now uh, country songwriters or playing, <laughs> playing with country songwriter, you know, country artists. And, right. um, you know, one of my, one of my, um, one of my best friends here who has been in a lot of rock bands like myself and, and projects like that now uh, plays for Keith Urban, for instance. And, right. you know, yeah, it's, um, but, uh, but the rock scene, I would say I'm less plugged into any kind of scene than I used to be. You know, I, I'm, uh, I'm in my uh, mid to late thirties now, and I don't really get out the way I used to. So I'm not, I, I'm probably not considered um, someone who's in the know of the current scene. Right. But, All right. But, but yeah, there's, you know, Jack White lives here, you know, I mean, the black, the black keys are here and uh, Kings of Leon. I mean, that's probably those three are probably three of the biggest uh, kind of rock acts around, you know, and they're all Nashville based. Yeah, yeah. But as far as the local actual local scene goes, I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's there. There's a lot of small clubs where, you know, um, when when live shows are happening it's it's mostly yep. rock or or indie or something like that anything but country you know you go downtown to broadway and there's a strip that's all country but then you know there's there's probably a dozen other venues in nashville where any night of the week it's a it's a rock show happening you yeah. know so yep. so it's it's definitely here you know i believe there's quite a few kiwi and australian artists who make the trek to nashville to soak up some of whatever is going on there and make some connections and do their thing, but it's not necessarily country. It's kind of a mix of everything these days. So. Yeah. I've met a few of those, a few of those, uh, those folks here, you know? Yeah. They're for sure. Yeah. Sprinkled into Nashville. People come from all over here to I chase bet. The, well, the, the dream music city, suppose. isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now, before we break off, we should talk about guitar playing a little bit. Uh, there's this tune on here that's pretty heavy. It's called White Lines. And uh, tell me about your, how has your guitar playing uh, changed, improved, denigrated, whatever it's done in the last few years? How do you approach the <laughs> guitar these days? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, you mentioned sort of the simplicity of the song structure and the length and things like that. And yeah, this this particular album, it uh, it does kind of live in one. For the most part, it somewhat lives in kind of one lane, you know, which is pretty. Uh, I referenced the Kinks earlier, but yeah. um, you know, it's a pretty straightforward, um, kind of dumbed down thing intentionally so you know what i mean and uh um you know i i i wouldn't ever consider myself to be like one of the most technical guitarists alive anyhow um but the thing that i do you know i um i can get by with that i suppose (laughs) but it's uh (laughs) but it's just but it's just um you know yeah it's simple and it's uh I think uh, my main focus, even though, uh, you know, I I enjoy playing guitars and getting into some riffy stuff here and there, I prefer to uh, whatever I'm doing just to serve the, hopefully serve the song more than say this sort of uh, masturbatory, like guitar uh, virtuoso type of thing, you know? So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. And, and white lines is kind of one of those. I mean, um, White Lines is the only track on the record that uh, I recorded outside of Smokestack. It was recorded as a single prior to this record. And I did it with um, a producer named Vance Powell here in in Nashville. And uh, so he's, uh, you know, he's incredible. Um, He works with, speaking of Jack White and Chris Stapleton and a number of other guys. He's kind of their go-to, you know, engineer and and producer and things like that and uh so we uh yeah did that track with did that track with him right right and you mentioned all those guys one gets the feeling from being an outsider there's just like all these people just wandering around nashville all the time run into them at bars and restaurants everywhere i mean is it, is it kind of used like to. that i mean used to you know yeah i mean yeah. obviously I mean, now we remember down <laughs> yeah you know, it, it all depends on what circles you're running in, but I definitely remember, you know, ru- having run-ins with, um, with a lot of, a lot of folks, you know, I mean, in the early days, um, of being here, especially, you know, when I was really yeah. out and about a lot more, I've got a three-year-old son and a wife right. and a house in the country now. So, you know, you wouldn't really find me at, yeah, at a bar in Nashville the way you used to, but, um, but, but it, yeah, I used to, you know, run into say, I remember running into Jack White at a poetry, uh, a friend's poetry reading, you know, years ago, or, you know, I'll see Stapleton or some, or, you know, Sturgill Simpson or some guys like that at uh, (laughs) just some guys like that, (laughs) local, local, (laughs) local record shops, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. People are, are, or uh, I should say guitar shops. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Nashville is pretty cool in that way that I think that people can somewhat um, still kind of live their life and go do the things that they want to do without being bothered too much, you know, and uh, yeah. yeah, as long as you stay out of the touristy parts of town, you know, sure, you, sure. you know, if you live here, you kind of know where not to go probably. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But, that's but, but yeah, with this, uh, with this density of, of, of musicians, you know, you're pretty, you're pretty bound to run to run into uh, somebody, somebody, you know, getting around. Very cool. Now I assume that this record was recorded and written a while ago. So have you had time to think yeah. about what you're going to do next? Oh, I'm always thinking about it. You know, uh, now what I'm going to be allowed to do next, who knows? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I'm technically, I'm allowed to do whatever I want. I mean, I can go make another record tomorrow. It's uh, the cool thing is that I've been able to just stay independent, you know? Yeah. And, um, so it's uh i'm thankful for that Um, you had have you had some unpleasant experiences with organized music labels and things or after 15 years in this business yeah of course you know (laughs) yeah i have and and that's probably part of why i am independent you know now with my own music and i you know i i own i own my music and um and um prefer it that way you know but yep i think i think uh, there's benefits to have you having a big label and a big you know machine behind you and those kind of budgets and those sort of opportunities that might come with it but mm-hmm. there's certainly uh there's ups upsides and downsides to everything yeah i suppose isn't there so 
<laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, to really actually answer your question, uh, my my goal is just to, uh, you know, I'm sitting right here right now in the room that I write most of my music in, and uh, I've already begun writing. I was already writing as, you know, as soon as I was done recording this album about a year and a half ago, I was already writing for the next one. So I'm gotcha. sitting on a sitting on a pile of songs, um, some of which I, I'm already pretty positive will be a part of the next album. And and I think I still got a little ways to go. I've got some more to, to write first. Um, I want the next album to have uh, a little more of a of an ebb and a flow than this one did. Um, my previous EPs were considerably more subdued than this uh, record is. And then this is pretty much a kind of, you know, one, one speed kind of overdrive, you know, rock record. So yep. I think with the next record, I'll, I want to have, you know, go on a little bit more of a ride. Cool. And so uh, we'll see, you know, basically it'll just be a matter of de depending on what kind of songs come out. There you go. You know, between now and then. Cool. And you got your thing happening on Thursday night. So people can Thursday tune night. Into that. See what's happening. That's right. It'll be spin interesting. Mag spin magazine uh, Twitch. Yeah. We're playing the playing the record from front to back um, at the studio where I made the is it going to be like an empty studio with no audience and that kind of thing? Or? Oh yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. just, we're, you know, with <laughs> oh, he headphones, yeah. Headphones on and, and it's just a, like a studio session kind of thing. Gotcha. So. Well, it should be fun. Right. Yes. Not well, to tape Li thank live to digital <laughs> live, to, live to those little numbers, ones and twos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks for taking time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Love the record and hope everything goes well. we'll hopefully you can come down and visit us sometime again. Man, I look forward to it. And then hopefully it'll be summertime there and cold here again when I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will be. <laughs> All righty. Hang in there. See ya. All right. Take Bye -bye. care. Thanks.